to the Diamond Brothers Detective Agency. I am Anthony Horowitz and I have written eight books about Tim Diamond, the world's worst detective, and his much smarter younger brother, Nick. You come to the agency at a bad time. Tim Diamond hasn't had a case for three months and he's down to his last cornflake. Fortunately, a new client has just arrived. A mysterious woman has asked Tim to help find her missing father. But why is he missing? And is he really her dad? Tim and Nick head off to Bath and we join them as they go to his house and start looking for clues. One thing was certain, we weren't going to find anything here. There might be a clue in the house, there might be a thousand of them, but how could we possibly find them in all this chaos? Tim reached out for a piece of cloth that was resting on the arm of a sofa and blew his nose. He's not here, he said, there's absolutely no sign of him. Except for his underpants, I agreed. Oh, where are they? You've just used them to blow your nose. Tim gagged and dropped them on the floor. <laughs> what are we going to do, he asked. Well, I suppose we could speak to the neighbours. That was as far as I got. We both heard it at the same time, a key turning in a lock. Somebody was opening the front door. Then there was a low murmuring as two men let themselves in. It was impossible to hear what they were saying, but somehow I already knew they meant trouble. I've met a lot of crooks in my time, and they all talk the same way, spitting out the words like bullets. Many of them can't even say, Good morning, how are you? Without it coming across like a death threat. These two sounded particularly unpleasant, and they were heading further into the house. Okay, Tim put his finger to his lips and hissed. Whatever you do, Nick, don't make a sound. Right, I said. He took a step back, looking for somewhere to hide, and at that moment his elbow knocked into an empty wine bottle, which tottered and then fell towards the wooden floor. Tim screeched. He reached out with both hands to grab it, missed, and as the bottle shattered, his elbow caught the corner of the trestle table, which immediately collapsed, crashing down with about a ton of computers and all the other equipment in an explosion of grinding metal and shattering glass. Two of the computer screens had been smashed to pieces. The other computer, which was still plugged in, short-circuited and exploded. Somehow the Alexa self-activated and the opening bars of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony blasted out of the speakers before there was another shower of sparks and silence returned. The two of us stood there, paralysed. Uh, do you think they heard us? Tim whispered. Move! We had nowhere to go. There was only one door leading back into the kitchen and if we went that way, we'd definitely be seen. However, I'd noticed an archway covered by a curtain on one side of the room. I threw the curtain back to find an empty space behind it. I grabbed hold of Tim and pushed him in. Then I followed, pulling the curtain back just as the two men came hurrying in. I left a crack between the curtain and the wall, which was just wide enough for me to look through. And although they couldn't see me, I had a clear view of the new arrivals. I felt my heart sink. They were bad news, all right. It wasn't the broken noses, the sunglasses, the shaven heads or the beards. It wasn't the rippling muscles or the tattoos, the cobras crawling up the arms, the daggers on the sides of their necks. It wasn't even the matching black leather biker jackets with the letters WC printed in silver studs. No, what I was staring at was the massive guns they were both carrying as they looked around them for somebody to shoot. They certainly weren't tourists. That much was clear. You hear that, Tommy? One of them asked. He had a high-pitched voice that seemed to come out of his nose as if he'd forgotten he actually had a mouth. I definitely heard something, Troy, the other one replied. He spoke slowly, as if he had to work out what word was coming next. Uh, and I think it came from this room. Someone's hiding. Oh, that's what I thought. That's my view entirely. Well, since nobody came out, they must still be in here. I think we should find them and kill them. Why don't we kill them first and find them later? Uh, no, Tommy, I think my way is best. All right, Troy, whatever you say. But where are they hiding? The two men scanned the room. One of them, Troy, was scratching his beard, but the other one, Tommy, had noticed the curtain. He was looking straight at me, even if he hadn't seen me yet. Oh, there's a curtain, he exclaimed. That's true, Troy agreed. Maybe they're hiding behind it. 
Good work, Tommy. Let's fire lots of bullets through the material and then we can have a look. That's exactly what I was going to suggest, Troy. Right. They both lifted their guns and took aim. There was absolutely nothing we could do. It didn't seem fair. We'd only been hired that morning and now we were about to be shot to pieces. We hadn't even made it to tea time.